welcome everyone to this week um, LIP seminar. So today we have Louis uh, Dermo. He did his PhD at the University of Sorbonne from 2016 to 2019 under the direction of Giovanni Calderini. He has been one of the main analyzer of the discovery of the decay of the X boson to B quark, as well as the production mode with an associated uh, vector boson. He worked also on the design and measurement of pixel sensor for the upgrade of the Atlas tracker for the high luminosity phase of LHC. Since the end of his PhD, he's been working at the Northern Illinois University. He contributed to several studies for, tracking based for a tracking-based trigger for the high luminosity phase of LHC. And since 2020, he has been coordinating the HH analysis in the PV plus T photon final state. So today we will talk about the Higgs pair production at the LHC. So please go ahead whenever you, you want. Thanks a lot, Valentina and Liana, for organizing uh, this very nice seminar. Um, so uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Louis. I'm a postdoc as at the NIU. And today, indeed, uh, I will talk about uh, Higgs pair production at the LHC. But more or less, why this tool or this search is our unique uh, investigation for the uh, electroweak symmetry breaking as we know. Um, I will start with a bit of introduction on the uh, theoretical model that uh, um, provides us with this uh, DIX production. And then I will try to describe you uh, the, all the different searches that we have done so far in ATLAS. Uh, one of the collaboration uh, on the LHC and comparing with the other results that we get from, from, from these searches. So first, let me motivate you of why it's important to measure Higgs pair. As you, as you know, um, the Higgs potential um, that provides us the knowledge of uh, why certain particles acquire mass and certain uh, don't, uh, has two, three, par three, three parameters that are so-called mu and lambda, and that are appearing in this first uh, equation here. When we are linearizing the field phi around its minima, um, one gets uh, a non-zero vacuum expected value for this field that we call mu, and a Higgs uh, field called H. And in this uh, potential, one can recognize um, a few terms that provides a, a, a mass term for this Higgs boson, a, a, a coupling in green uh, uh, that, that involves three Higgs bosons and uh, another quartic, so-called quartic coupling in red. However, uh, all these parameters, mu, mu, and lambda are not uh, are related, let's say. So the vac vacuum expected value actually uh, can be derived at the square root of uh, mu square over lambda. And one can show uh, when looking at the relationship between the electron charge, the weak boson mass, uh, and the Fermi constants that, in fact, this parameter here is governed by one other signal, uh, uh, one unique uh, constant that is the Fermi constant GF. So um, basically the first piece of uh, measuring all these parameters came from uh, the Higgs boson discovery in 2012. So just by measuring the existence of this particle and measuring its mass uh, to uh, about 125.09 GeV, uh, we were able actually uh, to measure um, the parameter mu of, of our potential. And if we combine that knowledge with the measurement of the Fermi constant that can be uh, determined thanks to uh, the very precise muon lifetime measurement, and I've shown you, you here uh, the formula that relates the Fermi constants and this uh, uh, muon lifetime, one can get also um, um, a measurement of the vacuum expected value nu that should be uh, around around uh, 246.23 GeV, and therefore combining this uh, vacuum expected value and this mu value, one can get already um, a numerical value for this lambda parameter. So basically, in 2012, we were able to completely give an estimate of the two parameters of uh, this Higgs potential. So why would we bother to look for two Higgs boson? Well, actually, 
this was not a direct proof of uh, whether or not this lambda parameter being non-zero. Um, and so lambda actually can be accessed um, uh, in two different ways. Um, and, and as you will see in the rest of the talk, I really, I often denote not lambda, but kappa lambda as what the parameter of interest in all searches, which is basically the ratio of this uh, measured lambda parameter to its standard model value that was defined as 0 0.13 in the previous slide. Um, so this parameter actually can be accessed in two ways, either at three level, so meaning a, a real production of pair of Higgs bosons as denoted in this Feynman diagram on the top or uh, in the bottom here. Uh, this, um, uh, we can see that uh, this lambda value or kappa lambda value has a strong effect on the production cross-section as denoted in this graph with the black curve where you see the cross-section uh, highly depending on, on kappa lambda. Or it can be also accessed at loop level, uh, in fact, in single Higgs searches. And you can see here an example of one of the Feynman diagrams where uh, a Higgs boson is produced in association with two uh, uh, quarks uh, in the so-called vector boson fusion mode. And, 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 and here, lambda is also playing a role in this cross-section. However, the effect is way smaller, as you can see from the other types of curve that we have in this plot, where the cross-section uh, does not depend uh, highly on this uh, lambda parameter. Uh, another way of determining kappa lambda is uh, actually on uh, looking at the kinematics uh, on the single fix production, where deviations can be seen in the distribution of uh, certain variables. And this is also one probe to, to this uh, lambda parameter. Um, the last piece of element in our uh, in our potential is this so-called quadric couplings that involves in, involve in fact the same lambda parameter as in, as in the, uh, the the Higgs production, but uh, the problem is that uh, uh, this, uh, this since the parameter is very uh, low, uh, right below one, um, uh, the the production uh, at three level is is uh, very small, um, and there's not a lot of effect of of kappa lambda on this. At loop level, uh, we can also uh, look at actually uh, the effect of 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 this quartic couplings in the Higgs production, but. Um, it has also a very, a very mild effect on both the cross section, a bit stronger the kinematics as, uh, as for the single leaks, but not a lot. Therefore, even with the uh, biggest machine that we can uh, think of right now, with, which is, for instance, the uh, future circular collider, the FCC, that should collide uh, a proton proton at 100 TeV, um, the uh, measurement on, on or the uh, um, the deviation from uh, having a lambda uh, parameter uh, for the quartic couplings uh, are very broad uh, to, to, to order of dozens of units. So it's not even reachable at the end of uh, a so-called FCC program. Um, so why are we interested in measuring this parameter? Well, basically we assume that the X potential is, is what it is. Um, however, there are other models uh, that could um, also provide an electroweak symmetry breaking, but with different uh, theories. Uh, not being a, a good expert in all the, 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 the details of this theory, I just wanted to show you here the shape of this uh, new potential that uh, um, uh, provides a non-zero uh, non-vanishing uh, vacuum expected value for, for the Higgs field. However, you can see that uh, they differ in, in, uh, in the shape uh, really of, of the considered potential. And therefore uh, that could have actually an impact on the Higgs production uh, cross section. And, um, and here in this plot, you can see uh, the, uh, the predicted uh, 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 ratio of the production of uh, DAHIX over the standard model prediction. 
and one can could probe actually uh, at the uh, Hayumi LHC phase of the LHC, uh, or even better at the uh, ILC or the FCC. Uh, some of these uh, theories and uh, I, I, uh, either discard them or confirm them depending on this the Higgs protection. So this is uh, of great interest also uh, from the theoretical perspective. Now, how are Higgs pair uh, produced actually um, in PP collider uh, from the standard model point of view? We have several production modes as for the single Higgs. The main one being the so-called gluon-gluon fusion that involves gluon inside protons. Um, however, the main problem in, in, in the di Higgs production is that we have two ways of produ producing uh, di Higgs from two gluon uh, initial states. One with the so-called triangular uh, diagram that is represented here in pink, and the so-called box diagram that actually actually does not involve uh, lambda. So there's no triangular coupling, but still a di Higgs pair production uh, uh, at the end in our final states. And those two diagrams interfere destructively, making uh, the, the cross-section very small, uh, almost a thousand times smaller than the single Higgs production cross-section. Um, what is important, though, is that uh, basically um, the predominance of these two diagrams depends on, uh, uh, on the regions of the Higgs environment mass. So at very low Higgs environment mass, actually we are dominated by uh, the triangular diagrams and hence we are sensitive to lambda, while at high uh, uh, MHH we are more sensitive to the box diagram. And also kappa lambda uh, makes a, a difference uh, when varying the, the kappa lambda, we are changing the, the relationship between these two diagrams and we are changing the distribution of MHH. So the MHH uh, is a powerful tool to determine uh, the kappa lambda value. The second uh, production mode that we have in our hands is the vector uh, boson fusion, where you can see that several uh, diagrams contribute and, uh, um, and uh, additional coupling uh, are involved, such as the kappa 2v coupling, which denotes the uh, quartic interaction between two vector bosons and two Higgs bosons, and uh, the relationship between the Higgs boson and vector bosons uh, in the coupling called kappa v. Um, on top of this uh, very standard model production way, we can also uh, look at some BSM resonance that would couple to a Dijk's pair. And in these scenarios, we can uh, derive also prediction depending on whether the particle that couples to Dijk is a, a spin zero, such as in the two Higgs doublet models, or a spin two, such as in uh, some random syndrome model uh, with rough extract dimensions. So these are some models we can probe with the Dijk's uh, uh, final state. Um, now, experimentally, how do we produce those dihics? So, um, as I said in the introduction, I'm working on one of the LHC uh, uh, collaboration. And actually, the Large Hadron Collider uh, that is located under the French Swiss border um, is a unique tool that allows us to, um, to access these proton-proton uh, collisions. Um, with this unprecedented 13 TeV center of mass energy, um, we were able, both in the ATLAS and CMS collaboration, to record uh, almost 100, 140 inverse femtoborn of data uh, through the, the period that ranged from uh, 2015 to 2018. And uh, actually, uh, if we translate that in the number of single leaks and tykes produced, uh, in the run to uh, alone, we were able to produce uh, 4,300 or dikes per roughly, while uh, we were uh, almost at the, the 6.8 million uh, single leaks produced. But this is not the end of the story. Uh, we are going soon to start with this run three uh, data taking period with a small increase in the center of mass energy. And uh, the, our uh, ultimate goal is this uh, high luminosity LHC phase, where at the end of, of uh, the LHC area, uh, area, we will be able to collect more than 100,000 uh, DIX pair and more than 100. Uh, uh, 65 million single Higgs bosons. 
So uh, I've introduced you already uh, with uh, the different modes that we can uh, uh, um, look for the production of these tahiks. And actually, that defines uh, the basic um, uh, idea of how to do uh, an analysis and our strategy. So, uh, the non so uh, in the rest of the talk, I will really often re um, uh, talk about non-resonant and resonant prediction. The non-resonant being the GGF and VBF uh, prediction mode, while the resonant would be the spin zero and spin two predictions. Um, and you can see that already uh, from the prediction modes, um, we have either uh, no um, uh, side products or two uh, jets that are coming from uh, this uh, VBF production. So that start to define how to make the analysis. And then we are going to look at the decay products of each of the Higgs bosons. So uh, uh, this uh, Higgs boson decay very fastly to, to, to other standard model uh, particles. And based on the type of objects, they will define the strategy of the analysis. So either uh, looking at the trigger that we will use, how to reconstruct those objects, and also how which the statistical procedure, like which variable we want to fit in the, at the end of our analysis. The other uh, important point is that those two X bosons carry a lot of uh, transverse momentum. And um, the higher we go in MHH, the higher we, the more boosted our objects will be. And, and if our objects are, uh, carry a lot of uh, transverse momentum, actually the two objects decaying from the X boson um, can, can be really and, uh, closer to, and closer and closer to each other. Uh, with the formula that is depicted here, that the angular separation between two objects is related to uh, the mass of the Higgs divided by uh, the momentum carried by the Higgs boson. So we define uh, two different uh, status for our objects. Either we can reconstruct them uh, uh, separately, and we call that regime resolved. Um, and that aims really at low MHH uh, 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 analysis or uh, only one uh, big object can be reconstructed and therefore we are uh, calling that strategy boosted analysis. And, and, and you will hear a lot in this, uh, in this talk, uh, me going through non-resonant, resonant production or resolved and boosted production depending on, on the analysis. So this is a bit tricky to follow. Uh, now that we have produced our X pair, uh, we need uh, a certain detector to measure uh, those uh, uh, particles in our final stats. And for that, uh, I will uh, use here the, the data uh, recorded by the ATLAS detector that is conceived as a non-ion-like structure with different uh, sub-detectors that have uh, different uh, purposes, either measuring the, the, the tracks of the particle or their energy and, and direction thanks to calorimeter, or even for particles that escape from the calorimeters such as muon, uh, measuring trajectories of those with the, the final piece that are the muon spectrometer. All these detectors are um, uh, surrounded by a, a very powerful uh, uh, magnetic field that allows actually to measure uh, the, the, the momentum of, of the particles thanks to, 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 their, uh, to the bend of their track. Um, now, uh, as I said, there are different final states, and we are indeed classifying the analysis depending on uh, the, the final states that we are looking at. Uh, due to the unique coupling of the Higgs boson to B quarks and the high branching ratio of this decay, um, actually most of the analysis uh, will trigger one of those two Higgs uh, decaying into B quark. Um, and depending on, on uh, the other final state of the Higgs boson, the branching ratio will, uh, will change a lot from 33% um, to uh, very low branching ratios uh, that are BB gamma gamma to 0.26%. However, each signature has a unique property. So uh, starting with the 4B analysis, we have a very high branching ratio in, in total. However, we suffer with uh, large hadronic backgrounds. For the BB tau tau uh, final states, we both uh, uh, have this high branching ratio from Bs and uh, the very unique final states of the Higgs decaying two tau uh, that allows to reduce the background uh, of such analysis. 
the, the third uh, main analysis would be the BB gamma gamma, where uh, here the, 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 the decay of the Higgs to two photons allows to have a very good mass resolution actually, and to probe lower uh, energetic uh, decay. And finally, we have a class of categories that can be that are said to be unclassified, let's say, but that involves uh, one of the two Higgs decaying to vector bosons. And, and for that, we'll uh, get a very nice uh, branching ratio. However, uh, those final signatures are, are very complex and you will see the, the, the impact on, on, on the results. So let's start with the, the 4B final state. So uh, before going to the results itself, I wanted to, uh, to show, to give you a glimpse on how do we reconstruct those B jets. So B hadrons actually have a very unique experimental signature that allow to identify them uh, uh, out of the, uh, the other uh, types of jets. So B hadrons have, uh, for instance, a very large lifetime uh, that makes a secondary vertex uh, uh, measurable and tracks with large impact, with so-called large impact parameter. We have also a high uh, decay multiplicity, so up to uh, an average of five uh, charged particles. And in uh, or, or almost 42% of the cases, actually those B hadron decay semi, semi leptonically. Therefore, we have a soft muons in the final states. And all those features actually are used by a so-called baseline tagger that will use um, some of the uh, detector properties such as the track uh, measurement, et cetera, um, or, or the muon measurement. Um, to uh, select uh, uh, some of the the the, the bees the bee jets uh, uh, out of the uh, other types of jets, and all those baseline taggers are actually combined into um, a higher higher level algorithms that are using a multivariate analysis such as uh, BDTs or uh, neural networks uh, that are designed to uh, select those B hadrons out of, uh, uh, for instance, C hadrons or uh, live jets. Um, as, as you may have seen, uh, it's very easy to miss tracks or to miss uh, some of the elements of these B hadrons, such as the muons. And therefore, we have to apply some uh, dedicated energy corrections um, uh, in our final tests to, to reconstruct better our B hadrons that are essential in our uh, analysis. So in the 4B final states, depending on whether we are interested in the non-resonant resonant case, in the GGF production mode or VBF production mode, or the resolved and boosted, we are uh, relying on the number of p jets in our analysis. So basically in the uh, resolved analysis, we are going to look for four central beta jets, thanks to the uh, uh, algorithm described previously, or in the boosted case, um, uh, to look for two large R jets uh, with inside at least one variable reduced beta jets. For the VPF case, on top of that, we are going to request two forward jets with opposite uh, eta sign, so in the two end caps of our uh, uh, detector. The main uh, problem here with this 4B final state is that it's very hard to uh, pair the jets correctly and to assign them to a Higgs boson. Therefore, depending on the analysis, we have constructed different algorithms to, to, to assign the two jets together. Uh, in the uh, initial strategies, which are the GGF and VBF analysis, we were looking at the uh, angular distance between the two jets, comparing them with the uh, four jet environment mass, and uh, looking at the um, uh, expected two X boson uh, and the distance with respect to uh, the expected uh, mass of the two X bosons that for uh, reconstructed and experimental reason is not centered into uh, this uh, 125, 125 GV uh, point in this uh, uh, diX mass plane, but more to the 120 and, and 110 GV uh, mass plane. Actually, this method now has been replaced with a, 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 a multivariate analysis using BDT uh, in the latest resonant uh, paper uh, that in fact involve uh, the angular quantities of the jet, such, such as delta eta, delta phi, and delta r to identify, to pair better the, the two jets. Now, how do we look for signal? Well, first of all, uh, we are going to use the dihex invariant mass as our final discriminant in the fit, and then we have to control our background. 
So depending on the, the analysis, strat different strategies are, are performed. Uh, to reject TT bar first, we are uh, using a specific variables, measuring the consistency of jet originating or not from top quarks. And for the mud jets, actually we are going to derive a set of signal validation and control regions in the DAIX mass plane as represented in this uh, uh, plot here. And uh, we are actually using the shape of uh, data reweighting from uh, two B tag uh, signal uh, uh, control regions to the signal regions. Uh, in the boosted case, uh, however, uh, due to the um, low uh, uh, VR jet uh, variables radius jet finding efficiency, uh, actually we are not uh, always considering a four B final state. Uh, but uh, we we are all uh, for for we are dividing our signal regions into different number of beta jets in the final states. So either uh, two and two in the two large, or two and one, or one and one. So the four B, three B, and two B final states. Um, the control of our backgrounds, which are also TT bar and multi jets, is very similar to the resolved case with slightly different uh, uh, iterative uh, reweighting techniques, let's say. For the VBF, uh, actually the analysis is very similar to the GDF result, uh, yielding very similar results. So what are the results? So um, from the, the GDF side, uh, let's start with the non-resonant uh, uh, resolved analysis. The limit that we can place on the cross-section time branching ratio on this partial uh, run to data sets is about 12.9 times the standard model, standard model prediction. And uh, we are able as well to place some uh, limits on some resonant um, analysis. And depending on the mass of the resonances, actually, uh, we, are a, we are using the, either the resolved or the boosted analysis uh, to, to place those limits. Uh, as you can see from, from the bottom plots, the most significant excess actually is found at around 1.1 TV with uh, some local or global significance uh, ranging from uh, respectively uh, 2.6 sigma and 1.0 sigma. Um, on the VPF prediction mode, as I said, the cross-section is uh, way smaller than the GDF1, and therefore the limit is higher uh, uh, on, on this uh, prediction. And uh, we are uh, setting a limit at uh, 840 times the standard model. But the interesting uh, aspect of this analysis is that we are able to set also limit on this kappa 2v parameter. Um, that are between minus 0.4 and 2.6, uh, 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 so for this kappa 2v parameter. We were also able to place some limit on some very specific VBF resonant uh, analysis, uh, and, uh, and, and here are the uh, no deviation from the expected uh, values are seen in, in for VBF. Uh, let's, let's move to uh, the BB tau tau final state. So uh, how to reconstruct tau? So uh, similarly to B hadrons, actually tau leptons have also a unique but complex experimental signature. They have a smaller lifetime, five times smaller than the B hadrons, with uh, a, a, a relatively large mass comparable to, to B hadrons. And in 35% of the K, actually those tau, tau leptons decay uh, leptonically to electrons or muons uh, with uh, some neutrinos in the final test that are and detected by our uh, detector. And in the remaining 65% of the case, actually they decay hadronically. So mostly in one or three charged pions with possibly uh, one additional neutron pions. So this is a very challenging final stage to identify and reconstruct. And actually we can use also dedicated sets of uh, MVA techniques using tracks and calorimeter jets um, to uh, identify those tau leptons out of the normal jets. Uh, and I've uh, shown you here uh, two different branches, depending on whether we are considering uh, resolved uh, uh, leptons, tau leptons, so the, that will use BDTs or uh, recurrent neural networks for the identification and energy calibration. Um, or a very novel die tau identification technique that uses ability for boosted uh, topologies that are of interest for our diags analysis. 
Um, so the tr strategy here uh, for the, uh, the, the decay into 2B quarks is uh, roughly the same as for uh, the 4B analysis, so requiring 2B jets in the resolved analysis or one uh, large R jets with two variables, variable radius B tag jets inside. And uh, the main interest comes from the uh, Higgs decaying to 2000. So in the uh, resolved case, we are requiring at least one of the two tiles decaying hadronically, uh, and the other one can decay either leptonically or hadronically. Um, and uh, to reconstruct uh, this Higgs boson, actually, and as I pointed you before, uh, there is a real challenge of uh, measuring um, uh, precisely the mass of this two, uh, uh, of this die tau system, and we are using a so-called missing mass calculator that incorporates in a log likelihood some some uh, kinematics and some pretty fine. Uh, 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 knowledge such as that the two tiles comes from a Higgs boson in order to uh, to better reconstruct our final state. Um, in the boosted case, actually, uh, this die tau system is identified uh, with the algorithm uh, described previously. And in this large R jet, uh, we are going to look for at uh, uh, not greater than uh, three subjects, and that the sum of the uh, charge tracks should be plus or minus one. Uh, for each of the sub -tiles. Um Now, uh, what do we do here? Uh, depending on the result of boosted analysis, we have uh, very different uh, uh, ty uh, uh, ideas to, for the final fit. In the result case, uh, actually, we are going to train MVA um, uh, uh, multivariate algorithms uh, to distinguish our signal from background and fit directly this MVA distribution. Uh, the signal regions will be actually depending on uh, the, the finer states of, of the second tau, so leptonically or hadronically. And in the leptonic uh, channel, actually, we have two different signal regions depending on the trigger that was used. So either a single lepton trigger or a lepton plus tau trigger. So that defines three signal regions. And depending on the non-resonant and resonant, we are going to use either BDTs, neural network, or parameterized neural network uh, as our uh, NVA distribution to be fit. And uh, as such, we have uh, also dedicated control regions to control for uh, TT bar uh, background, the Z2 tau tau, but also um, the fake that uh, the fake taus that arises from multi jets that are evaluated from data through an ABCD method. On the boosted side, uh, uh, here we are uh, going to have a set of cuts and then fit a single bean with diff for the different resonant masses. And these selections are based on the mass of the large R jet that are reconstructed and the visible the Higgs mass. Um, uh, similarly to the result analysis, we have dedicated control regions for all these very important uh, uh, backgrounds that are Z to Tau Tau and multi jets. So here are the results. Uh, on the resolved case, uh, we are uh, setting a limit on the cross section to 4.7 times the standard model prediction for the full run to data set this time. And we can place also limit on kappa lambda uh, to, uh, from ranging from minus 2.4 to 9.2 observed. Um, we are also able to, to put some limits on the resonant case. And here, actually, we have uh, some deviation from the expectation. Uh, uh, the, the, the highest uh, deviation actually comes at around 1 TeV, with a local or global significance, respectively, of 3.0 sigma and 2.0 sigma. On the boosted case, here, no uh, uh, evident uh, significant excess was found actually, and, the, uh, and we have uh, different limits that are placed depending on this Dahix visible mass. Uh, and you can see that there are, uh, 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 for a given uh, 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 hypothesis for this X particle, uh, we have different limits set. Um, uh, that brings me to the third analysis, uh, the third most uh, precise analysis that is BB gamma gamma, for which I was uh, uh, particularly involved in. So here in this strategy, um, similarly to, uh, to BB tau tau and for B finest, we are going to require exactly 
to be JATs, and uh, here we are not considering a boosted analysis, so only resolved to be JATs, requiring less than six central JATs. And then on the uh, X decade to two photons, uh, we are going to require exactly two high quality photons and no lepton in the final state to be orthogonal to the other two analyses. So, as I said, uh, while the MHH is uh, of particle interest uh, for us, uh, actually here we are going to fit uh, the diphoton environment mass as we know that we are uh, we have a very nice uh, diphoton uh, mass precision in our measurement uh, thanks to our detector. But this uh, DIX environment mass actually is still useful because, as I said, is sensitive to kappa lambda for the non-resonant search, but also sensitive to the mass of the resonant for the resonant search. However, if we were just to compute the, the, the four objects in violent mass, actually we would suffer from uh, uh, certain experimental resolution effects. And th therefore we can correct this by uh, assuming that the two Higgs boson uh, actually are uh, originating from uh, Higgs bosons that are uh, at 125 GV. So we have this corrected invariant mass uh, that we call MBB gamma gamma star that allows to uh, improve the resolution. And you can see on the left plot, actually the improvement that one can get, uh, especially on the resonant masses uh, from computing this, um, this corrected invariant mass. Uh, then how do we look for signal? So we are going to place a set of cuts. On the non-resonant, we are going to train a BDT to select uh, signal-like events with respect to diphoton and single Higgs uh, uh, background. And um, it, in order to be a bit smarter, we are going to uh, actually first divide these BDT categories uh, BDT uh, cuts uh, in two different categories based on this uh, uh, dice uh, uh, corrected environment mass. Uh, on the low mass, actually, we are going to train our BDT uh, on the uh, high kappa lambda values, so focusing on beyond standard model uh, DIGS production. While for the high masses, uh, actually, we are going to train our BDT uh, on the kappa lambda equals one. Um, uh, so the standard model DIX product. On the resonance side, this time we are going to train two BDTs to uh, separate our signal from uh, the diphoton uh, background on one side and the single Higgs uh, background on the other side and place mass dependent cut on uh, a combined BDT score, creating therefore 22 mass categories. On top of that, for each of the masks that we consider, we are going to open a, a, a mass window on this DIX environment, corrected environment mass, around the, the hypothesis of the MX, and with a, 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 a width that depends on the resolution actually of, this, uh, of the hypothesis of this MX particle. Then uh, um, to fit our signal, as I said, we are going to use the diphoton uh, environment mass, and actually Actually, our background and signal processes will be modeled thanks to functional forms, so not using any Monte Carlo uh, to, to uh, provide an estimation of, for this uh, uh, background signals. So either in the diphoton background, we are going to test several mono monotonic functions, uh, decreasing functions that will fit to some Monte Carlo templates and that will normalize to data sidebar. The choice of these uh, mono, monotonic uh, functions will be actually done on minimizing uh, the potential signal bias that we can make. And actually, in our analysis, the final choice that was uh, done was to use exponent, uh, exponential functions for this diphoton back. For the single Higgs and dyx signal, here we have a resonant. Uh, um, we have resonant processes, and actually they can be modeled with so-called double-sided crystal ball function that uh, incorporate on top of uh, just a normal uh, uh, Gaussian uh, some resolution effect due to experimental effects. So here are the results for this channel. So in, on the non-resonant side, no significant success was found, and therefore we can place a, a limit at 4.1 times the standard model prediction, which is the best limit uh, observed to date from a single channel and placing also uh, limits on kappa lambda to uh, minus 0.15 uh, to 6.7, which is also the best limit on, on this kappa lambda parameter uh, in Atlas so far. 
Uh, on the resonant side, uh, we have also placed limit on, on this uh, spin zero particles and actually no deviation, no uh, significant excess was found uh, out of the expected uh, cross section. So uh, let me uh, briefly summarize uh, the other types of uh, uh, analysis that one can find uh, in, uh, in the DAIX that are a bit less sensitive. So here I will just focus in analysis where uh, uh, one of the Higgs bosons also decaying to big quarks, but you have also two other analyses that were performed uh, with all the finest names. So in the first one, uh, actually um, out of the uh, two vector bosons, uh, one will always decay leptonically, so involving a lepton in the final state. And depending on whether the other vector boson decays hadronically or leptonically, we have different analysis. So in the case where um, uh, the, other, the, the second uh, vector boson decay hadronically, actually, uh, we are going to have resolved and boosted the, the dedicated analysis, requiring, as always, uh, two b tag jets, exactly two b tag jets in the resolved case, or one large R jet with two b tag jets in the boosted. And from the Higgs decaying to two vector bosons, um, we are going to require one high quality lepton and, and two additional jets that are chosen in order to minimize the uh, angular uh, separation between those two jets. Uh, with a kinematic fit actually to uh, 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 reconstruct uh, uh, this uh, very uh, uh, well, this very challenging final states with one lepton and two quarks and one neutrino in order to improve the, the uh, environment mass of this Higgs pose. And actually, we are going to fit the Dijk's environment mass in different categories defined in, in with some selection. Um, for uh, the case where the two vector boson decays uh, leptonically, actually we are not only sensitive to BBWW, but also to BBZZ and BB tau tau final states. And in this case, we are going to require uh, two opposite charge high quality leptons to remove some of the background. And actually we are going to make uh, uh, some categorization based on the flavor. So either the leptons are uh, electrons or muons, or uh, two muons or two electrons. And then applying a deep neural network to remove the dominant uh, background that arises from top or uh, Z plus heavy flavor jets. And here are the results. So as I said, uh, they are way more limited than the uh, three previous searches. So the limits are set on the cross sections to uh, either uh, th 300 times the standard model or 14 times the standard model prediction. Um, and uh, actually on the uh, LUQQ final stage, we are also able to provide limits on, uh, uh, the, on the resonant, both in the resolved and boosted regime. And in the BB and UL new final stage, we are uh, starting to probe also the kappa lambda parameter, but with very limited precision compared to the other analysis. So once we have all this very nice analysis, uh, I will conclude with showing you how to combine those and how to compare with uh, other analysis. So actually, we had a, a combination that was done with 36 inverse femme to bond analysis uh, that is depicted in, on the left. And um, where, where uh, the limit on the cross section was actually set to 6.9 times the standard model with this partial run two data sets. And you can see that uh, from this partial run two to the full run two, we have been able to improve by a lot uh, the, the, um, the, the limit on the cross section that one can set in the BB tau tau and BB gamma, gamma, but also in the BB WW final state. Um, actually, very recently, we uh, have, so recently meaning last Monday, we have released um, a new combination uh, of the uh, BB tau tau, BB gamma gamma, and 4B final states um, with the full run two data sets. And here you can see the limit that uh, we are reaching now uh, with uh, combining only BB tau tau and BB gamma gamma to 2.8 times the standard model prediction for the cross section. But if one interprets uh, that at, at, with the signal strength, which incorporates also um, some um, uh, theoretical uncertainties on the standard model prediction, uh, then we are set to uh, 3.1 times the standard model. And as I said before, on, we have also set some uh, specific VBF uh, cross section limits uh, to 840 times the standard model. 
So if we compare actually with a CMS, so CMS has only a partial run to uh, combination. Um, uh, so uh, with this uh, limit that was set to uh, uh, 12.8 times the standard model uh, uh, expected and 22 uh, observed, but they have actually uh, new results that are entering in the game and that are summarized here in this table where you can see the limits in the in all the individual channel from the partial run two and the full run two. And uh, the blanks here are filling very rapidly. So we hope that in the next month is uh, we will be able to provide a full run two uh, limit for, for this cross section. We have also the first measurement actually on the VBF uh, cross section. So Atlas uh, set a limit at 840 times the standard model prediction, but actually CMS was able to do better uh, in the uh, 4B boosted final case with 226 times the standard model prediction. And in the BB gamma gamma resolved analysis, they were also at uh, the 225 times the standard model prediction. Um, also, limits were uh, set on uh, kappa lambda and kappa 2v, and here is the combination of the kappa lambda measurement from bb gamma and bb tau tau, which sets the new best record on, on this kappa lambda measurement to uh, uh, between minus, minus 1 to 6.6, uh, .6, which is the best limit sets on kappa lambda so far. Um, and on VBF, we were also able to provide limits on kappa 2v. But actually on kappa 2v, uh, comparing to CMS, CMS recently uh, 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 gave uh, a, a very nice 4b boosted analysis where actually they were able to uh, discard the kappa 2v equals zero uh, 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 um, point by more than 95% uh, confidence limit. So here now they have displaced this limit on kappa 2v between ranging from 0.6 to 1.4, which is also very challenging and that we'll try to uh, uh, do better in the, the near future with, with Atlas as well. Um, uh, finally, on uh, the resonant limits. And so uh, this was, uh, this is uh, the, the combination of the limits with the full run two analysis. And this very nice plot shows that actually the different analysis dominate in very different uh, uh, ma ranges of masses. So at very low masses, BB gamma gamma sets the best resonant limit for the spin zero uh, uh, prediction. Then on, um, on the middle range, actually BB tau tau starts to, uh, to be competitive. And, and for very high masses, actually a 4B dominates the, the combination. Um, on the VBF side, uh, actually only 4B provided uh, this, uh, this spin zero limit, but that is also very interesting in the near future to look in this uh, VBF resonant production. And here I wanted just to show you uh, actually deviations from, uh, from the expectation in this uh, spin zero uh, uh, particle. And actually, uh, uh, we had seen uh, deviations in the 4B and the BB tau tau final state. So here is a combination of, of both. And one can see that in the combination, uh, the largest deviation actually occurs at 1.1 TV uh, with a combined local or global significance of 3.2 and uh, respectively 3.2 and 2.1 sigma. Um, and in comparison uh, for in the BB tau tau only fi final state, so uh, at 1.1 TV, we had the deviation of 2.8 and, uh, and 1.5 respectively in the uh, hat hat and lab hat uh, channel. So there are um, still things to discover either from uh, non-resonant and resonant searches uh, in the near future. And uh, I hope that uh, with this talk, I convinced you that uh, the Dahex analysis is very rich and we are able to, pry, to probe uh, very, nice, uh, very nice limits, also providing uh, uh, understanding on, on this unique electronic symmetry breaking uh, uh, theorized by, by Higgs uh, et al. in the past. So thanks for your attentions and I'm open now to uh, any of your questions. Thank you very much, Louis, for this very uh, complete and interesting seminar.